good morning, everyone. Uh, very interesting from Casey in the, in the SaaS story because I think that's really pertinent for us as an enterprise, as CoreLogic. We're a big SaaS customer. And I think part of our story that we're going to tell you is about how we're moving from a world of many, many technologies and really no enforcer to a world where we want enforcement, we want standards, and we really believe platform as a service is a way to get us from where we are to where we need to go. And we believe Cloud Foundry is really the way to get there. So what is CoreLogic? Most of you probably have never heard of CoreLogic. CoreLogic provides data analytics and data-enabled services to a number of cross industries. Our roots are in real estate, mortgage, and uh, the financial services segment. Recently, we've been diversifying into insurance and to spatial solutions. We spun out of a company called First American four years ago, so we're really a relatively new company on this, in the scheme of things. Um, one of the things that's a big driver behind our whole Innovation Development Center exercise is looking at how we can grow core logic, how we can move the top line numbers, the revenue numbers, through a different way of deploying technology, a different way of looking at our data. I think most of you have probably come in contact with CoreLogic, but you just don't know it. If you bought a house, your realtor has likely used multiple listing services provided by CoreLogic. If you went to a lender to get your mortgage, you've likely, the lender has used CoreLogic origination services to help supply the supply chain for the mortgage that you got. And if you're paying your real estate taxes, this year, we're on track to pay about $80 billion in property real estate taxes across the United States to 23,000 taxing jurisdictions. So we kind of are in the life of everyone. We're just one of those companies you've never heard of. So over the last 20 years, the interesting thing about CoreLogic is we grew up out of a number of acquisitions. And during those acquisitions and those subsequent integration of those acquisitions, no technology was consolidated. So every business unit was left to stand alone, and you can see the resulting metrics that come from that. It's a, a mishmash of technologies. Um, this is just a sample here of some of the technologies on the lower part of this slide. It really doesn't provide a good, robust environment for us to build new products, new services, especially as we try to look and interrogate our data and come up with new analytics and new information products to serve our customers and serve our emerging markets. Um, in fact, um, one of the things that we have to look at is how do we combine all of these things? And what we did after we spun out four years ago is we combined all of our technology organizations down into one technology solutions group. And that took about two years of consolidating operations, looking at our different um, inventory of applications, inventory of technologies. And we've con finally come to the point where we can take a look at that about a year ago and start determining what we wanted the future to look like. So what we did is we formed, again about a year ago, the Innovation Development Center, which I run, and we brought in a number of the key technology leaders of CoreLogic and really pulled them out of their current jobs as the nucleus for what we believed would be the future of product development for CoreLogic as an enterprise and the future of um, our architecture. We looked at the existing inventory that I just showed you, and we realized we really have a multitude of technology platforms, really a lot of hardwired, duct-taped, band-aid-together um, systems that don't really provide the basis of a platform of the future. And really, we were trying to build an application platform of the future. So what we did is the Innovation Development Center, when we first formed, looked at what were the emerging trends in the industry? What were the new norms? How could we take advantage of these norms as we moved into the future? And we believed that CoreLogic was kind of standing on, at a point where we could take advantage of these things to really change the industries that we play in. So we created the, um, <laughs> my boss actually created this architecture version of our, uh, of our future, which is really a good depiction of what we were trying to do. When you look at individual business units that have siloed technology stacks, each delivering products, sometimes to the same customers of CoreLogic, it creates a lot of confusion, it creates a lot of developer overhead, it really isn't the best way to leverage the CoreLogic data repository. We needed a way to deliver using the, the emerging technologies, voice, iPhones, or phones, 
smartphones, iPads. Um, we needed to integrate still with our legacy customer environments on the B2B basis, whether they had a hosted solution. But we needed something that had an underlying common component, common services architecture that we could work from. And lastly, and very important, and I think everyone else has touched upon this, infrastructure as a service was important to us. As we looked at emerging cloud trends, we were already running some applications out in Amazon. We were running applications in Azure. But again, different technology stacks, really nothing we could leverage. And the problem we have as a very regulated company under the scrutiny of the CFPB and financial institutions is that some applications we have just simply can't run in a public cloud environment. But we didn't want to build a version of on-prem data privacy applications that work in our vSphere environment and then have a whole other set of applications that work out in Amazon or CHS or whatever the public cloud, Rackspace, whatever public cloud offering we wanted to have. But we wanted that flexibility to move as the industries, as information security and compliance trends shifted, we didn't want to have to go back and rewrite our applications. We also looked at data as a very important part of our future, especially as our new platform that we were going to develop was going to leverage different information delivery technology architectures. So from, a, from the standpoint of CoreLogic, you know, we have a lot of data that we, we consume and we ingest as a company. We consume information about every property in the United States, um, a lot of consumer data, a lot of different information. So what we needed to do is a better way to deliver that. Today we deliver it through a series of relational database technologies, uh, through enterprise data warehousing technologies, and as I said before, we have every data technology. So we have Teradata, Netiza, um, Vertica, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. We wanted to really, we had the opportunity and we're given the opportunity to start from scratch and look at big data and fast data technologies and leverage those to build new analytics and new data for the future. We also had some key design principles. Now, I think everyone's heard of fail fast and no big bets. Those were kind of our over, overarching tenants. We didn't want to, um, as I've often said to my team, we weren't getting $50 million and taking five years and building something. We needed to deliver in short increments, and when we saw something not working, we needed to adjust quickly. We also needed to build out in a world where we were going to be hybrid and interoperating with our legacy environments. The other thing, and you see bullet point number one there, our developers, because we had all of these technology stacks, were often involved in the minute details of every technology stack we supported. Our goal was to abstract developers away. We didn't know it was going to be Cloud Foundry when we came up with this. We just knew that our developers were spending too much time. The intellectual property and the secret sauce of CoreLogic is developers focused on building business value for CoreLogic, not in understanding how WebLogic works, not in understanding how Red Hat Linux works, or an iSeries RPG program, or anything else that we may have had. Um, the other thing is we wanted resource flexibility so that we could move resources in a common SDLC, in a common technology environment, from application to application, from project to project, and product to product, in a much more fungible way than we do today. So we kind of settled in on this notion of really what we want, because we're abstracting away everything, is we want everything as a service. And we came up with a detailed reference architecture. And unlike everyone else that showed nice legal slides, my legal team just told me I couldn't talk about it. But, um, <laughs> So that kind of, you know, if you want to talk to us afterwards, uh, we have some of our team here. But, um, but anyway, so, so we came up with a nice detailed reference architecture, and the notion was everything as a service. Again, developers focused on developing products and services for CoreLogic, and us running in a hybrid cloud environment with some type of platform as a service architecture. And we took this conceptual model to a number of different technology experts. And we were looking for some key fundamental things. Market adoption. Is the community going to expand? We know we were on the leading edge of some of these things. Is it going to lock us into the specific vendor or give us opportunities and options in the future to move to different uh, technologies, different services as they come about? You know, from an ecosystem perspective, we wanted a broad and robust ecosystem. We did four 
um, actually in the fall, we did four mini proofs of concept. We looked at the results of that. And to be honest, you know, there were a lot of things that were similar in some of these things that we looked at, and a lot of things that were different from an enterprise perspective, and a lot of benefits and pros and cons. At the end of the day, though, what we really liked about Cloud Foundry was Pivotal. And why we liked Pivotal is I call it the 360 degree view. CoreLogic is an information data and analytics company. Pivotal has a strong background in information and data products. Pivotal Cloud Foundry, the commercial version of Cloud Foundry, allows us to be on an open source standard of Cloud Foundry, but yet with Pivotal behind it supporting it. And the Pivotal Labs environment let us, basically we took our scrum agile engineers that we had and were able to move them into a more extreme agile environment working side by side, which I'll, I'll get to in a minute, with the, the Pivotal team here in San Francisco. Um, what we were able to do then uh, with Pivotal is um, after the mini POCs, is in February we landed a team on the ground here in San Francisco and we started building our first product. So this was a from scratch product. So remember, our idea is to build a complete CoreLogic platform. We were given the opportunity to go greenfield. We were given the opportunity to forget the legacy, but interoperate with the legacy. So unlike some of the other case studies, it gives us the opportunity to sit down and start building new products on an entire new technology stack, and then integrate other products over a roadmap and over a, a, basically over time. Um, so we were able to hit the ground on, in February with Pivotal, building our first product, which is on track for delivery um, on July 1st. It's actually uh, an internal facing application uh, that supports a data operation function, but also an external facing client application that will be used by financial institutions to help in the underwriting process uh, for mortgage originations. Um, so it's a very critical application in the life cycle and supply chain. We realize that the Cloud Foundry platform is still relatively new, but we've, we've put kind of our eggs in the, in the Cloud Foundry basket because we feel like the community, the people here today in this, in this summit, um, the companies that we've been talking to who are developing products and services on Cloud Foundry are gonna give us that robust platform that we need. In fact, um, we had such great success in the first couple of months of our project, February and March, that we launched a second product development effort um, in April, which will actually go live sometime in September with the first release. So both of those products are on track and on budget. We're working jointly, CoreLogic engineers, CoreLogic designers, CoreLogic product management working jointly with Pivotal using the Cloud Foundry platform. Um, but again, I just want to be clear, these are really intended to be pilots for us. Um, we have an entire roadmap of platform services and things that we need to build out um, to fill in the ecosystem for CoreLogic. Um, that was kind of a quick journey because I don't have all of the detailed architecture slides that I wanted to show you, but our journey has just begun. And when we looked out at the technology industry a year ago and have started down this path with Cloud Foundry, we realized that enterprises today, companies such as CoreLogic, where we're building applications that are internal facing and applications that are external facing products of ours, can take advantage of the same technologies that startups, that Silicon Valley companies take advantage of, that SaaS can take advantage of. We can also take advantage of those type of products in building our applications. And I think what you find is that the new norm can be taken advantage of by any enterprise, um, those new norms, including platform as a service. We are gonna rely upon an open and rich and, and robust set of services going from end to end, from DevOps to all of the common services and components we need to build out. That's going to be you know, leveraging uh, really the community that's in this room and we're very excited about um, you know, our journey. It, again, it's, it's very early on, but very, so far, great success from what we've seen. And that's the CoreLogic story. Thank you. Thank you.